Oh, I can't live here no more, man. I, this, there's no way. I wouldn't. You can paint this up, you can do whatever, you can make it beautiful, but it won't be the same, man. You can't feel safe in a house like this, man. Oh, the second boy. we drove by over here, my, my wife was like, we gotta get a gun. Yeah. And she hates guns. She's not even about having guns in the house. She, we gotta get a gun. This is the house that Ken Jenkins and Devin Mead live in with their two sons. A little over a week ago, someone spray painted this on the front of the house. How did you realize that this was on the wall? Um, I'm standing on my porch right here and I'm, I'm smoking a cigarette and there's, there's snow outside and I noticed footprints kind of going both ways. And I was like, well, that's a little off, you know, like, let me come see what's going on. And I kind of look at my footprints and I see paint on my walls. He just basically came inside and said, take a deep breath, I have to show you something. And so, yeah, then I came outside. What was the first thing you thought? I kept thinking, how did somebody get this close to my house? Um, I was inside. And then I noticed the, the, the noose above my seat. Um, that's very personal. That's, that's a death threat to me. I mean, this person, that's one step away from some, that person coming into my house and my kids being the first thing they see sitting on the floor watching cartoons. The couple called police right after they discovered the graffiti. Denver PD told Vice News that the incident is being investigated by detectives trained to deal with hate crimes. Today, police released security camera pictures showing what they say is the man who committed the crime and the car he used. They're looking for help identifying him. There's no words for it, really. I mean, this is, to me, this is stuff you see in history books. Like, you see this right next to a cross or a noose, somebody hanging up, or right, you know, stuff you read about. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's 2019. Most people would have painted over the graffiti immediately, but Ken decided to leave it up. Walk me through that decision, because you got, you got a three-year-old and a nine-year-old black boys mm -hmm. that you're raising in that house, and you decided to leave the word nigger yeah. on the front of the house. It's, it's hard to explain that decision. That was, I stayed up till probably 2.30 in the morning. Once I got past the anger, I had to start thinking of my kids. Like, and I, was already, I had already told my wife, you know, you're gonna take the boys out the back when you take them to school. I don't want them to see this. But I, while I'm thinking that through, I'm like, I'm gonna hide this from my son? That would be wrong of me. A lot of parents would say, yes, I'm going to hide this from my son. But you won't talk about it. You won't change anything if you don't. How would your son understand it later when he deals with it? Ken says the next morning, a neighbor posted pictures of the house on Facebook and it started to go viral. Police showed up again. This time, they brought a maintenance crew and offered to paint over the graffiti. I said, no, you guys want to shut me up. If you guys paint my house right now, this all goes away. Nobody's going to talk about this. Nobody's going to hear about this. And then what if it happens to somebody else? Why is it that you don't want it to go away? Because I want people to talk. I want people to make some changes. Ken and Devin's house has become a weird tourist attraction. Does that happen a lot when people come up and take pictures? Mm -hmm. All day long. Really? But, yeah. As soon as the sun comes up until the sun goes down. Can I step in here? What is that like? Overwhelming. Did you expect that? Not at all. No. It, it's, it's, just, it's constant, but it, it's good. It's good. Yeah, it is good because, is um, you know, the conversation's happening mm -hmm. and people are able to express how they feel about it. And overall, that's a good message. I got people driving from two hours away here to come see this or come meet me or... You got people coming from two hours I, to look at this. Yeah. That is wild. Take pictures, look at it, post it, share it. Tell me that basically that they're proud of us and happy that we left this up. This is now part of your history because you live here. Yeah, I am black and I'm in this neighborhood right over there. I don't know what the whoever spray painted on there. I don't know if that's just their intention towards them or if it's towards every single black person out there. You know what I'm saying? It's been a week now. Yeah. Do you think it's been up too long? I think it's about about time for it to come down. How are you feeling about the effect that it's had? You know, obviously, I feel like if you leave it up too long, it could definitely start causing some harm. It doesn't need to be up anymore. I mean, I've already scheduled the painting to get done. So how do you think it's going to feel? coming back home the day that it's been painted over? It still will never be the same. <laughs> really? Yeah, I couldn't stay here. It would always be here. You know, you it'll it'll always be in the air. <laughs> I would feel like if I painted 
this, I would still see nigger through it. And that bothers me. It's gonna never be the same. That afternoon, Ken told a local activist that he was ready to take down the graffiti. The next morning, before Ken and Devin woke up, the graffiti had been painted over.